Welcome to St. Mark's. My name is Barb Eichner. And my name is Jim Eichner. We want to offer you a very warm welcome to worship today. God is at work among us, and we are excited about all the things God has been doing and will do in this congregation and the world. We hope that you feel right at home in this community. Hello everyone and welcome to Celebration Worship at St. Mark's. I'm in the, our beautiful sanctuary, our holy space. And this sanctuary is built on land that has been inhabited for hundreds of years by the Nisanan, Miwok, Miwok and Maidu people. We're grateful for this sacred land. As we gather today, we are lifting up the theme of all in, and all in is a question. And that has been the title for the whole series, and this is the last exploration in this theme. And so I'm asking, what does it mean to be all in? You know, Christianity is not a spectator religion. 
And far too often people think that being a faithful Christian is showing up on Sunday morning and watching what happens. Being a faithful Christian is 100% commitment to personal growth, spiritual growth, and a commitment to transform the world in the power of God's love and grace. This will be our final pre-recorded worship service that happened as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Starting next Sunday, uh, on July 4th, we will be having actual in-person worship here in the sanctuary at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Do please come if you can. If you're not able to come, then you will have the opportunity to watch on a live stream, and you'll find the link for that on our website or in the emails I circulate. The third option will be a recording of that live stream, which will be available in much the same way that this uh, recording is available. But it won't be immediately after the service. It'll be a little while before it gets up on the internet. The fourth option is to watch this worship in the 30-minute edited edition on Saturday morning on cable TV here in Sacramento. It's Faith TV. So do please choose which works best for you. And it's great to know that as well as our local community here in Sacramento, a number of people are regularly participating in this worship from other parts of California and other parts of the nation. Whatever you decide is your way of participating, I want to remind you that you are part of the St. Mark's family. No matter where you are, no matter how far away you are, you are a part of this community. As I mentioned, the theme is all in. Things are changing. Things have changed very rapidly. And our opening hymn is In the Midst of New Dimensions. Mark Slaughter will be leading us and then Margie Shank will have some time with the children.
always loved trains. And this is the first one that I got when I was about eight years old. And also when I was younger, I went on my first train ride. And I remember that there was a conductor that would stand between the cars. And when the train was just about ready to leave, he'd call out to everybody, all aboard, all aboard. And that was the call that if you were going on that train, you needed to get on board. And when I read today's scripture, today's Bible verses, it reminded me of the conductor because Jesus had gathered his disciples and other people together and he said, come, I want you to follow me all aboard. Let's all get in. And the people were, you know, some of them were a little hesitant to, to follow Jesus because also Jesus said, you know, you have to leave some things behind to follow me. And it's just like when you go on a trip, you can only take so many things with you from your house. You can't pack everything. You have to decide what's really important and what's really needed. And sometimes following Jesus is not easy to do, but we know that when we do follow Jesus, the world is such a much better place. I'm looking forward to seeing you in person next Sunday. I can hardly wait. We'll wear masks to keep everybody safe, but boy, come to have a lot of fun and to see all the friends that we've missed for so long. So until next Sunday, take care. Today's reading is Mark chapter 8, verses 34 through 36, as written in the Common English Bible. After calling the crowd together with his disciples, Jesus said to them, All who want to come after me must say no, no to themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. All who want to save their lives will lose them, but all who lose their lives because of me and because of the good news will save them. Why would people gain the whole world but lose their lives? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This weekend marks a very uh, powerful transition in the life of my family, the Pickens-Jones family. On Sunday, both my daughter, Emily Pickens-Jones, and my daughter-in-law, J.C. Pickens-Jones, will be ordained by our bishop, and wonderfully, it's going to be happening in this sanctuary. They will be ordained as elders, that means fully-fledged ministers of the United Methodist Church. This marks the completion of a journey that has gone for many years uh, of education and examination and making sure that the candidates are prepared for local church ministry. It has been a great thrill for my wife, Reverend Linda Pickens-Jones and our son Daniel to celebrate with Emily and JC this weekend. This is a high moment of commitment, a high moment of dedication, a really powerful moment. And it's all the more exciting because it's happening here in the St. Mark Sanctuary. If you wish to participate, you will find the uh, live stream for the ordination service, both on our St. Mark's uh, website, as well as on the annual conference website. The day before the ordination service, there is what's called the clergy session of the annual conference. This is going to be uh, on Zoom, but the bishop and the other dignitaries of, of the annual conference will be here, uh, seated close to where I'm now standing. And at that meeting of the clergy session, the name of Reverend Alan Jones will be brought forward for retirement. So I officially retire uh, but the bishop has asked me to stay on as pastor of St. Mark's for one more year. So I'll be here until June 2022. So being an ordained minister in, in the church is a powerful and binding commitment, which is often recognized as being distinctive uh, as a life of service and sacrifice. And sadly, sometimes there are pastors who don't live up to those expectations of service and sacrifice as they respond to God's call. We're very human, and sometimes we fall short of being all in. 
But honestly, the only way that the church can work, that God's call can work, is if we are all, all in. This is true just as much for everyone else as it is for the clergy. Christian faith doesn't work as it should without real sacrificial commitment. You have been called by God using the same mechanism that called me into ordained ministry 48 years ago. God recognizes your gifts more honestly and creatively than you do. God knows you. God knows your potential and what you can do to build God's beloved community. In your own unique way, God has called you to a life of prayer, of teaching, of service, just as much as God has called those of us who are ordained in the church. I love quoting the, the famous British orchestra conductor, Sir Thomas Beecham, because when asked by a, a reporter, what is it, sir, that makes you such a great conductor? His response was, well, I'm not the one who's great. I just stand there and wave my arms in the air. It's the musicians, it's the instrumentalists who make the music. Without them, he said, I'd look very foolish. The same is true in the life of the church. We recognize the calling of pastors, but it's the calling of all of us that really makes the music. And it's the harmonies of justice building and peacemaking and warm fellowship and supportive community that make the church work. If the world is to be changed, to become God's beloved community, it needs change makers, change doers, praying, studying, thinking, creative, energetic people responding to God's call to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. And as soon as you raise the question as to whether you have the skills, the knowledge, the energies the, to be up to the task, God speaks and tells you that you're not in this alone. There's a whole host of people surrounding you with love and support. And of course, God is always walking with you on the journey, walking by your side, encouraging you and providing you with all the resources you need to be effective. So please, as we go back to in-person church, I invite you to hear again those words that were read from our gospel. All who want to come after me must say no to themselves, take up their cross and follow me. What this says to me is that the life of faith involves setting different priorities of time, energy, creativity, compassion, and activism. The church is a movement of the followers of Jesus who intend to transform the world with the power of God's love. Transforming the world needs all hands on deck. It needs you, me, everyone to be all in to make compassion and justice real in the world to let people know that they are indeed a precious child of God, a unique and priceless creation of a God of love. So for Christian faith, there, there isn't even a conversation of moving out of a comfort, a personal comfort zone. Rather, people of faith know what discomfort is because when you're bringing change, then discomfort will happen. That's what it means to act in faith knowing that God is leading. Changing minds and hearts to bring justice and peace to the world means a lot of hard work. So please, as we go back to in-person worship in church, please prepare yourself for a new chapter of ministry. Things are going to be different. To be doing things you didn't expect to do, saying things you didn't expect to say, meeting people you didn't expect to meet, and going into places that you never expected to go. Some people will be in the front lines, making speeches at the Board of Supervisors or out there on the streets leading a process. Some people will be cooking, some will be cleaning, some will be joining the Finance Committee, others will be ushers here in the sanctuary or volunteering in the office or sitting on the Finance Committee, making phone calls, reading scriptures, writing letters and postcards, being all in 
will take as many different forms as there are people, but God has a task for you to do in building the beloved community. All who want to save their lives will lose them, says Jesus. If you try and protect what has been, uh, then you will lose. And God is calling you into a fullness of life. So please be ready to lose your regular routine, to try something new, to say yes when you're asked to do something at church or in the community to join one of our action groups or to be involved in our ministries of compassion here from the church. There is so much to be done, a whole lot of world to heal. You are needed. Being all in makes you alive in ways that you never imagined, ways that you've never experienced before. You know I love the poetry of Rumi. Rumi wrote these words, I was dead, then alive, weeping, then laughing. The power of love came into me, and I became fierce like a lion, then tender like the evening star. He said, you're not mad enough. You don't belong in this house. I went wild and had to be tied up. He said, still not wild enough to stay with us. I broke through another layer into joyfulness. So today I invite you to be fierce like a lion, then tender like the, morning, the evening star, and break through into another layer of joyfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show somebody who has tried Then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be. I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. If I can do a Christian art, if I can bring back beauty to a world apart, if I can spread love's message that my Savior taught, then my living shall Then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not.
as I pass along. Then my living shall not be in vain. And now I invite you to join me in prayer. And first, take a moment of quietness to bring your own heart and soul into the presence of God, into that holy place within. God of grace and love, we are acutely aware that you call each of us to take up our cross and follow you. At times, we find it difficult to breathe. Our confidence slips as we allow our moods to be molded by the divisive and ugly politics and terrible realities at work in the world around us. Help us, we pray, to discover each day the power of your inner peace so that we may stay connected to your people wherever and whoever they may be. Awaken in us, we pray, a sensitivity to human need and to brew, breathe in your holy, godly energy. Help us to stop forgetting the power of your grace, ignoring the spirit energy of your justice, resisting your call to lead in a journey to freedom, ensuring that all in our community travel with us. We pray as we must for those who are struggling with the realities of COVID-19, both in the United States and around the world. For those who have lost loved ones and for those who have lost everything but their lives, help us to be loving and generous in our response. We pray for those named in our church's prayer list and for those known personally to us who need our prayers today. We pray that we may tap into your healing spirit working through each of our lives. We pray for a world filled with violence and war. May we be peace builders, bringing hope and healing to the world. As we give thanks today for the gift of life and faith, we pray for the unity of your church. May we stop bickering over beliefs and join together, even with siblings of other faith traditions, as a movement for freedom and human flourishing for the entire human family. And so we pray together, our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're in partnership with God when we're all in. And so Gene and Jim Strathby will now lead us in singing in loving partnership.
as you go now into the week ahead, please remember that you go nowhere by accident. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. God has a purpose in your being right where you are. And God is with you. Christ, who indwells with you by the power of the Spirit, wants to do something in and through you. Believe this. Believe this. And go in grace, love, and power. In the name of the God of all. Amen.